Well, good morning and welcome to our service from All Saints Church in Deadworth. Again, being recorded from our own homes. Uh, I do hope you're still surviving lockdown. And uh, I guess I'm going to have to smarten myself up a little bit as uh, I'm going back to work on Monday for some work in the factory. But uh, yeah, it's great to have you with us this morning and especially a warm welcome if you're with us for the first time. Uh, we do hope you enjoy uh, the service this morning. Please do remember to hit the subscribe button below this video to get YouTube updates each week for our videos. And remember, you can go back to our YouTube channel at any time to re-watch any of these services. We'd love you to leave a comment below the video, keep in touch, tell us what you liked in the service, uh, to share how God's been speaking to you this week, and to give us some feedback or tell us where you're watching from. Uh, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, do check out our website, join our Facebook page, and just uh, see what else you could get up to or be involved in this week. Please do read our newsletter for all the details. Uh, you can also get in touch by email to send us an email to the church as we'd love to hear from you if you have a prayer request uh, or if you have any need in the community. This morning again we're going to have our virtual tea and coffee after the service via Zoom and the link will be coming up on the screen afterwards and it's in the newsletter so do please stay along and uh, just have a catch up with us after the service. Um, we do thank you to everyone who's been involved in our service today. Uh, it's Trinity Sunday and Mike's going to illustrate what that means to us this morning and, and Jackie will share God's word to us later in the service as she explains more about the community of the Trinity. We're also going to break bread and share wine or squash as you feel led uh, this morning later in the service. So try and get this ready for later on. And as we begin our time together, we just thank you, Father God, for being so awesome. We thank you that you are here with us this morning. We thank you for the way that you've been blessing us this week. And Lord, we ask that you just open our hearts this morning to receive from you. Help us to help us to listen, help us to focus on you just being in our lives this morning, Lord. Help us to hear from you as we concentrate and as we as we worship together this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so we're going to continue as we usually do. Michelle's going to share our family news. Good morning and welcome to All Saints Family News. Apart from, there's actually not that much news today. It seems we've not been up to much this week, but um, hopefully Barbara and Colin still enjoyed their anniversary on Wednesday. However, what you have been sending me in this week has been all of your um, Holy Spirit pictures, but before we see them, um, good on the Bonds for sending me in their tea towel pictures. So look, there they are. And of course, not to miss out Sheila. Well done, guys. And yes, the Holy Spirit pictures. You've sent me loads. I can't believe, well, I can believe how talented our young people are and thoughtful. It's been amazing. So just take a look at this. So first, we've got um, a video from Jade. What the Holy Spirit looks like to me is a dove, which symbolises peace and how the Spirit is always there when I need it most. Well done, Jade. So then our Holy Spirits. First up, we've got Chloe. In fact, look, we've got two from Chloe. Well done, Chloe. And then look at this one. This, this is from um, Chloe's brother, Max. And I'm going to just read you the words. So it says, pray to God continuously to know his will. Rely on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell you if something is God's will. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. But you have anointing from the Holy One and all of you know the truth. And then finally, you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. Well done, Max, you've put a lot of thought into that. And then we move on to Oscar's picture. Well done, Oscar. And Skylar's. Now Skylar had some words on there that you probably can't quite see. So they said peace kindness and love that's what she thinks the holy spirit like is like that's amazing and then rory's picture well done rory and then martha has written this the holy spirit is inside all of us you cannot see it it's almost a feeling 
a feeling that controls itself. It is not human. It is not an animal. You cannot give it a name. It is everything and nothing at the same time. You will not hear it if you don't listen. So sit and listen. And that's by Martha. Well done, Martha. And then we have got Allegra's picture. Well done, Allegra. And then Hannah's picture. And Toby's picture. Well done, everyone. Next week's challenge. Now, just like last week, can you go off in the minute and get your pens and paper and pencils and things? Because Jackie would like you to draw her a picture while she does her talk. And today, today's theme is Trinity. And she would like you to draw a picture of what you think community might look like when lockdown eases. So community and families meeting up with each other again. So just have a think about that. Or you might like to do Mike's challenge. He's gonna show you some symbols shortly. And he would like you to choose one and then just explain why you find it helpful. What do you like about it? Okay, guys, don't forget to send me in all those exciting things that are going on in the week, things that the children have been up to, things that the grown-ups have been up to. We'd love to hear all of your news and any birthdays and celebrations. And now we're going to sing the song Shine, so on your feet. me to illustrate Trinity. It's a tricky one that because I don't think most Christians fully understand it and certainly non-Christians do have a problem as well. We do believe in one God. We share that belief with Jews and Muslims but they struggle to understand why we talk about God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. The actual word Trinity does not appear in the Bible, but it's sort of hinted at in various passages, and we'll talk about that later. The word Trinity appears in Christian teaching about 150 years after the death of Jesus. It was sort of shorthand to describe the three persons of the Trinity. And it's made up of a Latin word, two Latin words, one tri, which means three. We have words in the English language like triple somersault or triathlon, which means cycling, running and swimming. And the second part of the word is unity. If you join the two words together and eliminate the U, you get trinity. Symbols. Early Christians used symbols from nature to talk about the three persons of the trinity. When Patrick left Wales 
in a very small boat to cross the sea to Ireland, he used the symbol of a little flower, a clover leaf, three petals but one leaf. And you can see that illustration today on Irish flags. It's on the Irish rugby shirt as well. From that came the Celtic illustration, which you can see here. You see it in all sorts of places, and it's on gravestones in churches in Ireland and Wales and Scotland, where the church was strong at the time. So what about some modern illustrations of the three persons in the Trinity? Well, I first came across this first one when I was in my teens. I was brought up in rural Gloucestershire. And in the local church, there was a most dynamic and amazing vicar. And he organised services for us teenagers, which other churches didn't at the time. And also, he ran the youth club on Sunday evenings. Now, there's not a lot to do in rural Gloucestershire in, in the evenings, and so we all went along. And one night, he talked about the Trinity. And he used a can of oil to illustrate it. I had the actual, not the actual can of oil, but <laughs> one that I bought recently. This, it's called three in one oil. I use it on the bike. And in the label it says, let me read it, it says it, it, it lubricates, cleans and prevents rust. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? What one, one oil can do. It's one oil, but has three functions and three forms. And he used this to illustrate the person, the Trinity. I have to say, I can't remember the full sermon, but I do remember three in one oil. Second illustration is water. Covers two thirds of the Earth's surface, critical for life, for ourselves, for animals and plants. But it does exist in other forms, as you know. Uh, on a hot summer's day, nothing like getting a bit of an ice cube in a cold drink, eh? Cools you down. But also it exists in other forms. Let's put this microwave on and see what happens because when you boil it at 100 degrees Celsius, things happen to the surface. Steam comes off. It's actually water vapor. It's a gas. And so I take this water out of the microwave and put it against this black surface here. And you can see steam rising off. Yes. So we have steam. We have solid ice, liquid water, three forms, three persons of water in fact, illustrating the whole concept of Trinity. My final illustration represents three ropes which have been tied together, representing God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, all linked together by knots. But of course the key thing is that there's only one God. And so by pulling this string through my hand, it reminds me that God, there's only one God, but three persons. And of course the knots fall out as well. Trinity is not a word found in the Bible, but the Bible does tell us that our one God is and always has been three persons. The Bible begins with the book of Genesis and the first two verses are In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And John's Gospel begins with these words In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. First of all, a reminder that whilst I'm talking, the children have a choice of two things to do. One, to draw a picture of community, of families meeting up again as lockdown is eased. 
The second is to choose one of the ways or symbols that Mike has shown us and say why you find it helpful. Whatever you do, send it to Michelle for next week's news. Now, Trinity is the word Christians use to say that our God is one God in three persons. It has been used since the second century, but it is not a word that you will find in the Bible. It is, however, a quick way of saying Father, Son and Holy Spirit. In the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells his disciples to make disciples of all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul ends the second letter to the Corinthians with, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Back in the 12th century, a theologian and mystic named Richard of St. Victor described the Trinity as a mutual loving companionship of friends. We might use the word community. He described God the Trinity as relationship, a way of being, a way of loving, living and relating to other people and to all that God has created. Only in this related way of living are we fully human, fully alive. We only have to consider the issues experienced by some who are living on their own in lockdown to see that one is not a relationship. On the other hand, relatedness is not easy. Relatedness means acknowledging how much we need each other. And that can be awkward, embarrassing, even toe-curlingly cringeworthy. With lockdown easing, we are gradually able to be with families and friends again. Screen relationships are not the same as face-to-face -face relationships. We are once again confronted by the foibles and eccentricities which were muted on screen. Mother Teresa observed it is easy to love those who live far away. It is not always easy to love those who live right next to us. It is easier to offer a dish of rice to meet the hunger of a needy person than to comfort the loneliness and the anguish of someone in our own home who does not feel loved. We might add it is easy to love those whom we see on the screen, but not always easy to love those we live with. But we have the God of relationship, the Trinity, to help us. You see, if you say God is good, you think of one person. But if you say God is love, there has to be two persons. Love does not exist in isolation, but blossoms between people. And by its very nature, the relationship of love cannot be contained, but spills out to be shared with others. Think of the delight a couple express over the birth of their new baby. Two people sharing their joy over a third person or a piece of news or an event are how new things start and spread. The gospel spreads because people share the good news of God's love for us, shown in Jesus and in the Holy Spirit who is with us, alongside us, wanting to be in relationship with each of us. Just as God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are in relationship with each other, they know each other and love each other as equals, so, God knows and loves each of us as equals. We are not the objects of God's affection. An object does not have a relationship. It's on the receiving end of something. But the minute a person responds to God's love, they are entering into relationship. And in that relationship, love is shared. Relationship is mutual. 
God the Trinity is community, a loving, mutually self-giving, creative relationship between equal partners, partners who long for each and every one of us to join them as equals, so that we radiate and share that loving community with all whom we meet. I'll end with a prayer. O oh God, our mystery, you bring us to life, call us to freedom, and move between us with love. Draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, so that we may join the dance of your Trinity, and our lives may resound and sparkle with your love. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Mount me, mold me, fill. Let us pray. In these troubled times, we seek hope for a better future when we are not dwelling in fear, but really living. To the Q, Lord of life, please respond, bring your hope. Let's try it now. Lord of life, bring, bring your, your hope. hope. We thank you for the way this pandemic has made us look afresh at our community, has opened our eyes to new ways of helping each other. Thank you for the witness of the West Windsor Hub, showing your unconditional love to all who call for help. Lord of life, bring, bring your, your hope. hope. We give you thanks for our government, both national and local, and for those who work to look after our health and well-being, whether they be in shops, streets, hospitals, schools or council offices. Thank you for their commitment to our safety. Protect, guide and keep them. Bless them with wisdom and diplomacy and the will to seek justice for all. Lord of life, bring your hope. God of love, we come to you in penitence and ask your forgiveness on us for the times we let our emotions get the better of us and snap and snarl at our nearest and dearest in the frustration of lockdown. Lord of life, bring, bring your hope. hope. Jesus, you preach the good news of freedom for all, and yet we're especially aware this week that our world does not reflect that. Thinking especially about the upset the murder of George Floyd has sparked, a prayer for freedom. God of hope, breathe your spirit into us and give us eyes to see the invisible chains that constrict and constrain your image in us and in others. Give us ears to hear the silent cry of those whose lives languish in the darkness of despair. Give us hearts to feel the pain of lives whose iron bars hide all horizon of hope and healing. Lord Jesus, we renounce 
our own self-destructive habits of hopelessness. We denounce a world which coerces and compels with fear and false obedience. And we pronounce the dawning of your kind and compassionate kingdom, the hope of all who walk expectantly with you. Lord of life, bring Bring your your hope. hope. Lord Jesus, we pray for healing. As a God who loves us and cares for us, we pray for Peter and Vanessa and their family. We bring to you Anita, Laura and the consultant we've been praying for especially for the many who have lost loved ones in recent days, and for Monica and her family. We ask for your special comfort and blessing. Lord of life, bring Bring your your hope. Thank you, Lord, for our church, for every single person who calls All Saints Church their church. May we all know how valuable we are to you and feel your blessing on us. And thinking of the sea with longing, stir us to share the good news of your love more boldly, to venture into wider waters where storms show your mastery, where losing sight of the land, we learn to depend on you, where time has a weaker hold on us and we learn to fix our eyes on eternity. Lord of life, bring Bring your your hope. hope. Merciful Father, Accept Accept these these prayers prayers for the the sake sake of your Son, our our Saviour, Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen.
We're now going to share an agape meal. Under lockdown, we cannot share communion, but we can, through technology, share a virtual agape meal. Agape is Greek for love, God's unconditional love for us, and by his grace, our unconditional love for God and for human beings and all creation. Agape is distinguished from eros, which is romantic love, and philia, which is the kind of affection we might have as in Anglophile for someone who loves England or Bibliophile for someone who loves books and reading. An agape meal is a fellowship meal, a community meal, reminding Christians of the meals that Jesus shared with his disciples. It is an informal sharing of bread and wine to remember what Jesus has done for us giving thanks for God's love as shown in Jesus. In a moment we're going to hear the story of the last Passover meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. And then you will hear some music played and that is when we shall all at the same time take a piece of bread and have a sip of wine or squash, remembering and giving thanks for what Jesus has done for us. It was the night he was betrayed. Jesus was eating a meal with his friends. They were a community, like a family, supporting each other. Jesus took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this to remember me. And he gave it to them. Later, after they had eaten, he took a cup of wine and said, This cup is God's new relationship with us made possible by my death. Whenever you drink it, do it remembering me. We have shared the memory of what Jesus has done for us. 
We give thanks that he really lived in the flesh, sharing his life, living in community with the disciples. Most of all, we thank you, Jesus, that you were broken that we might be released from fear and made whole through forgiveness, healing and love. Lord, we ask that although we are apart, may we never lose our sense of togetherness as members of your body, the body of Christ. the final prayer together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore.
Amen. Good morning. It's now collection time. In normal times, we'd pass around the plate, but we're now all stuck at home, so we can't do that. Did you know that even though the church is closed, we need to raise our income? The chart shows how to make donations electronically. You will find this information on our website and in our this week's newsletter. Please take a moment in prayer to consider your own circumstances and whether you wish to donate now. Almighty God and Everlasting Father, we thank you that you provided the many gifts that we enjoy so freely. May we be wise stewards with many blessings that we have received at your hand. Help us to cheerfully give back to you a portion of the abundance of your grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Paul said, each person should give what they have decided in their heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you and praise God. Hello everyone. The first thing to tell you is that Vicar Recruitment has speeded up. We had a meeting with the Parish Development Advisor, Rodri Bowen, this Wednesday by Zoom and now we only need two things to complete our profile. Firstly, how have we responded to the Covid crisis and we're working on drafts for that. Secondly, we need a get together with Rodri of the whole congregation to discern our future mission and what type of vicar we want. This was going to happen in April, but will now be on the morning of Saturday, the 11th of July at 10 a.m. by Zoom. And we'll have arrangements for those who don't do Zoom. Second thing to tell you is that we're taking part in a Churches Together in Windsor project to use the church grounds and building to interact with the community. Sue Morgan will stand in our memorial gardens every day and pray for the community at 9.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. Oh, and Church Warden's ecstasy. The leaky flat roof and the drains have been fixed. Someone emailed me on Friday to say, what an amazing church we have. We are so blessed by God, which was lovely. And I hope and pray that's what God thinks, as that's all that matters. Amen. So once again, thank you for joining us this morning and thank you to everyone who's been involved in our service. Please do share the YouTube link with your family and friends and uh, join us in a few minutes on Zoom as we have a catch up together as a church family. It would be really great to see you all there. If you have any prayer requests or need help this week, please do get in touch with us either directly through the church via email or send us a message on Facebook or get in touch through the West Windsor Hub. And this morning, as we close our service, we'll just close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for being ever present in our lives. We thank you today for your Holy Spirit, which ministers to us. Help us to listen to you more, Lord. Thank you that you have your loving arms that hold us tight. And thank you for our church family. Help us all to honour you each in our own way, each day of this coming week. We ask this prayer in and through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come set your rule and reign In our hearts again Increase in us we pray Unveil why we're made 
Come to set our hearts ablaze with hope Like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit, come invade us now We are your church We need your power in us Seek your kingdom first We hunger and we thirst Refuse to waste our lives For you're our joy and prize To see the captive hearts released The hurt, the sick, the poor at peace We lay down Church, we pray revive this earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness be. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church. Streets and land Set your church